So, so let's start. Um, we'll talk about a new um, topic today called camera model and calibration. But let me first make sure that I have the internet connection. Okay, good. I have. So um, we want to talk about um, camera calibration, and um, that basically involves that we want to find out the intrinsic and extrinsic parameters of a camera. Uh, when you take a picture, you know, where the camera was located, how it was oriented, and what was intrinsic, those are the extrinsic, and intrinsic are what's the focal length and all other related things. So extrinsic are three location and the orientation of camera, and intrinsic are focal length, the size of pixels, and so on. So, um, it has a lot of applications. So this is one example where let's say this is an image and this we will call a source image and this is a target image. They are these two pictures. So let's say we want to take this um, sign here and we want to put in this image such that it looks very realistic. That it uh, looks like that actually that sign was already there when we take a picture. So this is will looks like that. And it can also have shadows. As you see now we have a shadow of the sign also here. If you look at this picture it looks very real. You know actually it wasn't there. So now how do we do that? You know in order to do this we need to do talk about this camera calibration, camera model and so on. Okay? So that's one application of this and I have some more example let's say so so by the way do you know where is this uh, picture taken which which beach Cocoa Beach it's Cocoa Beach <laughs> okay so so this is a long time ago one of my student actually this is um, his wife and uh, the student himself um, so now this is another example of uh, this sports uh, image. So these two are real images and we want to take this guy and put it here. Okay, and uh, this is what we have and we now have also a shadow and it's artificial. I mean this, this looks pretty real. So this is a more example like we want to take this guy here and put it here. So put it here. Now we have a shadow also and we can do this uh, also in a video and um, this is the example of a video this is a movie uh, I don't know if you guys have seen this this is I think what five eight years ago which movie say it louder no I don't think um, is that this is this is taken from a Paris this is on the top of this um, place in Paris where people go visitors um, but now what and this is another movie do you remember this movie so you guys don't watch many movies you see <laughs> so so this movie is uh, I think Schindler's List so what is happening here is um, this guy is real um, but the other guy who's standing there, okay. So, so in this one, um, the little little kid who will appear. This guy, you no, know, so you saw a little kid here. This is uh, art artificial. I mean, this is taken from somewhere else. So this wasn't in the original movie. The guy, the kid which is running, and it's pretty nice. It looks very real. So you could you could do these kind of things. Child. A child. This little little child here. Oh, okay, let me play this again. Uh, so in this there are two kids, is that right? So um, so here you will see there's one kid here, there's another kid, little kid here. The little kid is taken from other video. Um, okay, so this kid is okay. This was in the movie. Now this other kid here, that kid, we put it from other other video. So it's, it's pretty pretty real, you know. It's in a shadow and all this thing.
Okay, so this is fun. Now this also, in this one the guy who's running is a real and this other guy who's standing there, it's artificial, we just put it there. But it has a nice shadow and it looks pretty, pretty real. Okay, so, so you know, it, you can do the fun things. Now the other thing uh, related to uh, this camera calibration and camera model is what is called pose estimation. So the pose estimation involves that we have a 3D object model and uh, we want to project that model in the image plane. Uh, say we have a picture, then we want to find out what is the rotation translation which we apply to the model so that we can project it matches with the image. So it's a matching from 3D model to 2D image. Okay? Because as you know, the images are 2D. So actual objects are 3D. So now I can take a picture from any different viewpoint, different orientation of camera and so on. So how do I know that what should be the pose of the camera, pose of the object, so that when I take that exactly it matches that with the image. And I'm going to show you another video here which is I think interesting. So this is the video on the YouTube and explains uh, <coughs> the um, application of this kind of thing. Um, so I don't know why, it's, okay, so hopefully this will come up here. And uh, <coughs> this has several things but you will see here um, okay so so here it's showing you you know that this is the application object recognition and um, then um, it's going to show you these different why is it not going smoothly maybe the internet is not really good here So it's a single object recognition, so there are these different objects and you want to be able to recognize. And the interesting thing will be here when you see the robot. And um, somehow the, the connection is slow or something. So let's, let's um, buffer it, then you may like that one. So do you guys know how to do this thing? Or? Refresh it. What do I, how do I refresh? Okay, now maybe. So, so as you see here, no, it's just, just keep doing that thing. Who is good in YouTube? You guys don't watch YouTube videos. Mouse bottom here. Yeah, just keep it there. Okay. Somehow it just just keep F five. F five. Okay. It just get out of this. Shall we try again? No. Oh, okay. So still it's, um, why is it? Because the connection is slow, is it right? Which one? It's working now. Okay, yeah, it's working now. Okay, so the main thing I wanted to show you is this thing. So there are these objects, there's a cocaine, there's other object, and um, so the robot is going, wants to grasp the object and take it from there, put it here. So how do you do that? And this is done being with the picture, you take the picture, you know, like here, and um, then it's going to put it somewhere else. Um, so in order to be able to do that, then the robot needs to know that what is the pose of this object so that it can plan its different angles of this articulation so that it can pick it up. 
and uh, um, that's the way to do is that they have a 3D objects of these um, these um, 3D models of these objects. So how do we play this again? Okay, and uh, so main thing is that given a 3D object, given a picture, now how do I determine how the what is the pose of object? So that is the pose estimation. It's very related to camera calibration, and we are going to talk about how to determine that. Once we know the pose, then we can program the robot that it can uh, go and grasp the object and take lift it up and put it somewhere else okay so so I will uh, the I'll send you the link and you can watch this uh, at home so we'll go ahead uh, <coughs> uh, move forward and this uh, I think somehow now it's working well so these are the virtual creation of scene these are the objects for which we have modeled and um, we can visualize these from any different viewpoints and so this is like a graphic. So we have a 3D model. Now this is a real object. Um, so we take a picture, and based on picture, as you see the camera, then we know exactly how the object is situated, and then we can pick it up. The robot can pick it up and put it somewhere else. It's going to put, put the pick the serial box similarly as we did before, and going to pick up another object, um, which is another box and uh, like that okay so we should get out of that so um so now you know these are pretty good applications of computer vision and the main thing um, which uh, boils down to that how do we relate to different coordinate systems because ultimately we are dealing with the numbers so we have say coordinate system say this is the origin of our coordinate system you know where the thresh can is at that at the bottom of that so that is zero, zero, zero. So we have 3D coordinates. Suppose this is your x-axis, this is your y-axis, and this is your z-axis. So now I can define anything in this room with respect to that origin. And I will have these units like uh, inches, or feet, or centimeters, or meter. I can say where he's sitting. I can say this is the x, this is y, this is z. Or I can say where that projector is. I can have the coordinates of any point here. So this is the way we are going to uh, relate the um, geometry of the scene. Okay, so that's a coordinate system. It's called word coordinate system, and you can you can put it anywhere you want it, but you know you have to be consistent. Say, well, it's always here, always there, and so on. So then we will have the image coordinate system. When you take a picture, you have number of rows and number of columns. So you will have x say is equal to 30 and y is equal to 90, so that is image coordinates, which are called small x, small y. This is called x, y, z, uppercase x, uppercase y, uppercase z. So these coordinate systems have to be um, related to each other so that robot know exactly where that cocaine is, what is its location, so that uh, it can plan, say, I'm here, then how do I rotate my, change my angles of this arm so that it can actually reach that X, Y, Z, and then how do I move it to put it somewhere else? And similarly, there's another object, its location orientation different, so then it will arrange these angles of the robot arm so that it's pick it up and so on. And the same thing as we say that we can put in artificial object in the scene, so we need to know where exactly to put in, and since we have the um, 3D object and we have a 2D picture so we need to know that what should be the focal length and what should be the scale and all these things so that it appears real but if you just take the object from one picture to the other picture we paste it it won't look real because it won't have real perspective effect okay because the problem is that we have a 3D world we are taking 2D picture so how do we make it real uh, and we need to in order to do all those things, we need to talk about the basic transformations that how to relate one coordinate system with other coordinate system. In this case, the coordinate system on the word, which is in 3D, with the image coordinate system and the camera coordinate system, which is a 2D. Okay? So we are going to quickly review this. Um, you already know some of these. 
um, but just to, for the sake of completeness, I'm going to go through these again. So you know, listen to these carefully, and at the basic level, each is very simple, very trivial. Anybody can understand. But we are going to build on those and come up with uh, one camera model at the end, which may look a little complex. But if you understand these simple operations, then it's actually fairly straightforward. Okay, so the simple trans transformation is 3D translation. So we have um, point x1, y1, z1. We translate. Suppose this object, the center is x1, y1, z1. We translate in 3D, and its translation is dx in y, dy in y, and dz in z direction. We get a new location x2, y2, z2. So we can write it down this transformation in a translation matrix, which is a four by four matrix, and these are the displacements. Okay, and um, for short, we will say this is a translation T T matrix, which is a four by four matrix. Okay, so then inverse of this translation matrix will be basically exactly same thing, but minus d x minus d y minus d z. So this is inverse of this. And if you multiply these two matrices, and you should do it at home, you will get identity matrix. Identity matrix means on the diagonal you have ones, the rest of the elements are zero. Okay, so it's a very simple idea, and this is done here. So then the next thing is scaling, which is that you take uh, x1, y1, z1, you multiply with the scale sx in x, sy in y, and sc in z, and you get a new location x2, y2, z2. And for this also, we can write down the scaling matrix. Now we'll have on the diagonal these scaling elements, Sx, Sy, Sc. Again, a four by four matrix. And then we have um, the inverse of that, which is just one upon Sx, one upon Sy, one upon Sc. And if you multiply these two, you will get identity matrix again. And you should verify that. And you also know rotation matrix. So this is a rotation around Z axis. So we have a vector here, we rotate around z axis, so it becomes like here, and we can relate x, y, z with x prime, y prime, z prime, and we look at these angles, uh, five and theta, and uh, we have done this before, and so we will end up with like this, x, y, z, maps x prime, y prime, z prime, which is um, these angles cosine theta and sine theta. This is a rotation around z axis in the counterclockwise direction. And, and all these you should be able to know. You know, midterm I'm going to ask you to you know, write down these. You know? So it's pretty simple, it's not that hard, but make sure you understand this. So um, now the other thing is the inverse of the rotation matrix. And this is the inverse of rotation matrix around z axis by angle theta. So you will notice that actually the inverse of a rotation matrix is very easy, just a transpose. So if you take this matrix, which is shown here, then you transpose, which means take the rows, make them column. So this will become cos theta sine theta zero, which is here. This this row will become this row column, and similarly this row will become this column. So this is the inverse of this, but actually this is a transpose of this. And you multiply these together, you will get identity matrix. Because cos squared theta plus sine squared theta plus zero is one. And similarly, if you multiply this with that, cos theta sine theta minus plus sine theta cos theta plus, they will cancel and will become zero and so on. Okay? So, um, so therefore, the inverse of the rotation matrix is a transpose, which is shown here, that I can take um, the rotation of z axis by angle theta and inverse I can just find a transpose of that. And when you multiply the transpose with the, you know, the itself, the, the, this without a transpose, then become identity. Now, other interesting thing is that these rotation matrices are a special kind of matrices, which I'll call orthonormal matrices. And orthonormal matrices means that if you take a row and find a dot product of that, or column find a dot product of that, then if the dot particle with itself, suppose this one, so it'll become cos square theta plus sine square theta plus zero, it's one. But if you find a dot product with other row, like this one, cos theta minus sine theta plus sine theta plus cos theta plus zero, becomes zero. So that these are the matrices for which 
if I multiply, I find a dot product of the R row I and row J. If they are same, then it become one. If they are different, it become zero. Okay. So, and we are going to use this property, you know, in in camera calibration. So that's fine. And we also talk about the Euler angles. You know, so we can have these rotation on arbitrary axis, and we'll break this in three rotations: rotation around um, the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. And this will become like that. And we can assume these rotation angles are small. They'll become simpler Euler angle matrix, which is a three by three matrix, which in which we have these angles alpha, beta, gamma. So now we also talk about the perspective projection, which relates the 3D points in the world with the 2D points on image. Okay, so that's the the pinhole camera model. So we have here uh, object X, Y, Z, and this is our lens, and this is our image plane. So we the lens, the ray comes here, goes through the lens, and makes an image here. So we have from here to here the distance is called focal length f. From here to here is z the depth, and this origin is here, and this is uh, uppercase y, and this is the small y. So looking at these two triangles which are equivalent, then we can write down minus y upon y is equal to f upon z, and we can rearrange, and now we get the y with the image coordinates related to the word coordinate, which are uppercase Y, Z, and X. And this is a focal length. And then this is for X. So we have done this already. And uh, now if the um, origin is here as compared to origin at the lens, so we'll have a little different um, relationship. This will again be minus Y, this is uppercase Y, and this is F, but this distance is now Z minus F because from here to here is z, but since we are looking at this one, so it's already here f, so we have z minus f, which is this one. So then y will become like this, and x will become like that. So there's a little difference depending on where you are assuming the origin, okay? So then the question is that, um, you know, how can we come up with a uh, perspective matrix? Like, see, we, we have a matrix for translation, um, scaling, rotation, we, we did that. Now it'll be good to come up with a matrix for the perspective transformation. But it's a non-linear, you know, because it's a Z is in the denominator. The other one was linear. They were all in numerator. So the trick is that, um, so, so, you know, we want to come up with this matrix, and which, which is kind of define the perspective transformation, um, is that um, what we are going to do is um, that we are going to use what is called homogeneous coordinates. So we have x, y, z, we convert them, and these are called Cartesian coordinates. We convert them to homogeneous coordinates. It's very simple, we just multiply with a constant k, every element here, it become kx, ky, kz, and the fourth component k. So from 3D will become 4D, okay, to simplify things. So these are the Cartesian coordinates, these are the called homogeneous coordinates, okay? So then we can convert from homogeneous coordinate to Cartesian coordinate. Again, take the fourth element, divide by the first one, divide by the second one, third one. And so this is like inverse operation as we did here. Here we're multiplying, here we're going to divide. So now if we do that, then the perspective transformation actually can be written like this. So we have one zero 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 one zero zero and so on, like identity matrix, and then we have on the fourth row zero zero minus one upon f and one. Okay, so let's see, you know, how does it look? So, so we are going to this will work only with the homogeneous coordinates. So we have a kx, ky, kz, and k, and this is our perspective transformation matrix. So we get the homogeneous image coordinates, which are called ch one, ch two, ch three, ch four. So we are going to uh, multiply this vector for the first row, it will become kx, then the rest of the zero we get kx. Multiply this with second row, it will become ky, and the kz. The fourth row will become zero, zero, it will become kz minus one upon f plus k. So that's what we have here. 
Now we got these the image coordinates in the homogeneous system. So we want to come up with a Cartesian. We are going to take the fourth element, divide the first one by that, divide the second one by that. And the first one become X coordinate, image coordinate, and second one become Y image coordinate. And that's what we have, CH1 divided by CH4. So CH1 is KX, CH4 is this one. So this KX upon K minus Z upon F, KK will come common, cancel, we'll get this, and then CH2, which is KY, divided by CH4, this. So this is exactly what we had previously for the perspective transformation. So we are able to do that coming with a 4x4 four four matrix, as we have done for the rotation translation scaling, now we have for perspective transformation. Okay? So now, yes? What is that? <clears throat> What is it? What? Is, what? F. F is a focal length. See the, I show you here, focal length of the camera, which is the distance from the lens to the image location. When you have, when you take a picture, you can change the focus. So that's that's what it is. Okay. So um, the um, so now we can come up with a camera model. So we have. Um, Whenever we take a picture of a camera, we have to consider um, some word coordinates, you know, and, and all these things will be related to that, as I said earlier. So let's say, you know, camera was there, you know, at that origin of word coordinates. And if it is there, I mean, we cannot see much, you know. So we are going to, um, you know, translate, you know, you take that and put it somewhere else, you know, X, Y, Z translation. We'll call that translation the matrix G. You know. So whatever you do, we have to account for because we cannot arbitrate, you know, we have to know. So it was there, now how much we translate it? And that's what the robot does, you know, because the robot is not human. It has to really calculate. So it was here, now I'm going to go here, and how much I need X, Y, Z. So, so first we are going to translate by this G matrix. And then we are going to rotate, for example, rotate around z axis in the clockwise direction, counterclockwise direction. So that's the second transformation. And then we are going to rotate around x axis in the counterclockwise direction. And then we are going to translate again by matrix C. So this is a series of transformation, and for every transformation we have a matrix. Okay. So we started with the word point, let's say word homogeneous, and all this we are going to do in homogeneous coordinate system. Homogeneous coordinates is nothing but take the 3D coordinates, add the constant k, and multiply each of the three elements by k, and add the fourth one, that's it. So we have the word point, which is w, in the homogeneous coordinate system, then we apply the translation, then apply rotation on Z, rotation on X, rotation, and then translation again, then perspective transformation to pick take a picture. So this will give you the coordinates in the image, the image coordinates, because we are moving the camera and so on, then we are taking a picture, which is the this perspective transformation. Then we can take exactly any point in 3D, we know it's x, y, z. We can find out what will be the image coordinates in the small x, small y, if you know the focal length. So it's very nice. It's pretty simple, but that's important model we need to know. Yes? And what are these rotations for? I mean, we just assume that my camera, I started, I put a camera there at the, next to the trash can. So then I want to take a picture. Now I move the camera from the origin and translate it, then rotate it, then rotate it and then translate it, then take a picture. This is just one example I did, but you can do some other way. But whatever you do, you have to account for that. And that's what the robot is going to do. Robot needs to know that, well, okay, I need to now translate my arm this way. Then I need to rotate and so on. So these are the series of transformation we need to account for. Then we know exactly that point in 3D where it's going to be projected in the image, what pixel, column, and row. There was another question? Yeah. I was yeah. going to ask why is the rotation of Y is, but okay, 
But no, I mean, I just took example. I mean, you can do. Maybe it happened just I did do X, you know. So you can do anything. It's just example. Okay. So so now um, one thing you need to understand that we are moving the camera here. Okay. And not moving the object. So you know. Either you can translate or rotate the object where the camera is fixed, or you can rotate, translate the camera and the object is fixed. They're always they are relative things, is right? So um, what we have talked about, for example, rotation, that we are rotating the object and translating the object and so on. So, and the camera was fixed. Now here we are rotating, translating the camera, object is fixed. So in order to model this, then we are going to use inverse transformation. Okay, because you know, if I translate the object, you know, there's one translation. Now object is here, then I want to get the same effect of the moving the camera, then I have to move the camera in opposite direction in order to do that. So that's the whole idea. Yes? Coordinate system that's for the uh, actual on that diagram that you had in the perspective it's on the left hand side of the image plane yeah so let's uh, look at that what you were asking um, this one so this is this is a general thing that I can take it doesn't have to be related to any um, you know perspective transformation and so on so I have 3d coordinates I make a homogeneous take the k, multiply with all three, add that, become four-dimensional coordinate, and that's called homogeneous transformation, okay? And, but perspective, and you understood that how we got those things. So that's, you relate these two together, then, you know, we have this. So, so you can yes. Input, what will be the value of W matrix? Uh, the W matrix, uh, which is here? Here. Yeah. yeah, so so W is another matrix, W is a point. So we have a 3D point, Express in homogeneous coordinates when we want to find out what is the image coordinates. Those are the, those are the points of the objects. Yeah, there's a, a word point, word point uh, object in the word coordinate system in 3D, and we want to find out what will be the image coordinates in the camera if you do these transformations. Okay, so that's what we have. So therefore, we can expand this, and we will have. The uh, these matrices uh, G, we translate it. You know this amount, the camera x zero y zero z zero. Okay. Then we have the rotation uh, around z axis, which is this matrix. Then we have rotation around x axis. We have this matrix. We have another translation with this one, and then we have perspective transformation, which we just explained. So we take all these matrices. You know there are five of those. We multiply them together. And order is important because first we translated G, then rotated Z axis, rotated X axis, then translation, then perspective. So this is the order we are going to do. And we multiply, and you should do that at home. And then you are going to get like something like that. So you'll get here this image homogeneous coordinate system. Coordinates are four-dimensional. From there, you will get the X, take the first homogeneous, divide by CH4, that will become X image coordinate, and then Y image coordinate will become CH2 divided by CH4. And this is what the expression will be. So it involves the theta angle, it involves a five angle, the rotation angles, it involves X0, Y0, it involves the um, R1, R2, R3, and so on, and the focal length. So this is kind of you know, camera model we have, and that's what essentially the robot is going to do, okay? So um, there's nothing, it's pretty, everything is very simple, uh, but you have to do that. You have to get these matrices, multiply them, do it correctly, and then come up with from hom quart homogeneous to Cartesian, we are divided by the fourth element, and, and that's it, okay? So that is our camera model. And um, now we can treat this, say, well, we have these five matrices, and we can have six matrices, seven matrices, you know, we can have lots of them. Um, each is four by four. You take five matrices, four by four, multiply together, 
you will get again one 5x5 five five matrix, okay? I mean 4x4 four four matrix, which is this one. So we can treat this, there are lots of things we did, but you know, at the end is the one matrix, okay? Which is the product of these matrices. So then um, we can write down this one, the CH1, which is the image X coordinate and the homogeneous will be um, this multiplied with the first row, which is X A11, Y A12, and so on. And CH2, which is the Y coordinate, will be like this. And then CH4 will be like that. Now, in this thing, as you know, CH3 is useless because we don't have image, we don't have 3D coordinates, we have 2D coordinates. So we are only interested in CH1, CH2 and CH4 because we need to convert in the Cartesian so we need to divide by CH4. You know, CH1 we want to divide by CH4, CH2 we want to divide by CH4. The first will become X, second will become Y. So that's what we have. So therefore, if we want to find the camera model, we actually need to know these 12 elements in this matrix. We don't need to know all 16 because CH3 is actually useless for us, okay? So, so that's the image coordinates defined as I explained to you. So now the question is that um, how do we determine this camera model, these 12 elements in this matrix? So one way is that you have to know exactly, say, well, I put a camera at origin, I ro translate it, rotate it, rotate it, translate it, and it's my focal length, and I can put in those values in this one this uh, I showed you and I can find out the camera model but the is there any other way to do it you know is a better way to do it so the way we are going to do it and that's in a way called camera calibration is we are going to do it that we will take some known 3d points in the scene you know we'll take maybe the camera you know we know what is 3d coordinates of that with respect to origin we'll take this chair you know or some other things. So we take the 3D points, known 3D points, uh, and then we'll take a picture and we can identify where is the camera at that point, you know, image coordinates for that. We know image coordinates for chair and so on. Then we will try to find these camera elements, the 12 unknowns in the A matrix, okay, by using least square fit. So so typical example is that we will have a checkerboard like this. So we have these alternate, you know, black and white squares, and we can define anywhere the coordinate system you want. Say, well, this is our, my origin, and I'm going to put in some height. This is x, this is y, and I'm going to put some at z, and then I can define the each of these in the word coordinate. I'll have some sheet of paper. I'll have this thing and I know this how many centimeters each square is, so I'll have these in the 3D coordinates for each of these points, and then I take a picture of that, and picture may look like that, okay? So I know the 3D coordinates from here, I know corresponding 2D coordinates, then I can do the least square fit. So the remember this was our model, that we have the camera matrix here, these are the word coordinates, the 3D, uh, the image coordinates, and uh, we are going to use these equations to come up with these unknowns, A11 to A14, and A21 to A24, and A41 to A44. And we don't care about A31 to A34 because it's useless. Okay, so now this is again, we have CH1 is given by this, CH2 is given by this and CH4 is given by that. Then we can try to rewrite this like that because now we have A1x, A12y and all this A14 minus CH4x and CH4 is given by this so we multiply small x each element. This will become minus A41 small x uppercase x and minus A42 uh, small x y and minus A43 um, z, x, z, and then minus a44, x. So this will be the first equation, and similarly we'll have second equation from here, which is shown here. We just put CH4 here and bring in on the left side. So now we have two equations um, which relates the 3D coordinates, which are x, y, z, uppercase, and 
image coordinate which are small x, small y in the A's. So when we do the calibration, we will know the x, y, z uppercase. We will also know the image x, y. Unknowns are the A's. So here we get two equations, we have 12 unknowns. So if we just have one point, we cannot solve this. But we can take several points, then we can solve this. And that's what we are going to do. One point will give you two equations, and we have n points, we'll get two n equations. So we have two n equations, these are linear equations, and uh, we can do the least square field. Again, this is another example of least square field we have been talking about that, like in Lucas Canade. There we have two unknowns, we can take a three by three neighborhood, nine equations, we can do that. Or five by five, 25 equations, and two unknowns, okay? So now, um, one other thing here, so we can put this in a matrix form. So we, these are our unknowns, these are the knowns, and this is our, you know, zero vector, and um, now uh, we can call this matrix C, we can call this vector P and the zero vector like that, it's a big vector, uh, and it has two n rows. Suppose we take 10 points, it will have 20 rows, but our unknowns are 12. Now, one other thing is that this is a homogeneous system. It's a linear system, but it's a homogeneous. Homogeneous means the right side is zero, okay? So which means this does not have a unique solution, okay? It has lots of solutions, okay? So because on the right side is zero, so I can multiply anything on the left side and multiply right side become zero. So uh, CP is equal to zero, but two CP also is equal to zero. Three CP is also equal to zero. So it's a homogeneous system. So what that means that I can arbitrarily select one of these unknowns and then solve for the remaining 11 unknowns. And I did that by selecting A44 as a one. Then I will have, instead of 12 unknowns, I'll have now 11 unknowns, okay? So now if this is known, I can bring in on the other side. So this will become the known, it will become one basically, and this is multiplied by X1, so it will become on the other side, it will become X1, one and x2 and so on and then this matrix will become now the two n rows but 11 columns because i'm going to get rid of that and uh, so now it become like that okay same system but i got rid of a44 and i have like that so now we have we'll call this matrix c a d this is q vector which i want to find out this is R vector, which I know because these are the image coordinates. And I can do this matrix is not a square. You know, it is the 2n by 11. It's not a square. Um, and, but I can force it to be square by pseudo inverse. I multiply by D transpose on both sides. And D transpose D will become a square. I can bring in here. So then I can find this Q like this. And we have done this many, many times, so you need to be very good at that. And this will be asked in the exam, so you should be able to do that. And, and you know, prepare questions to, you know, if you don't know, you know, ask me, um, stop me, but this is nothing, it's very simple. Uh, because the equation, you know, left side, right side, you just, you know, transfer. When you divide it from A44 into 1, mm -hmm. so the column will be 1. Because That's right, yeah. So see, as you saw here, um, so this will become, this was multiplied by x1, huh? a4, 4, x1, a4, 4, x2, all these things. So now this is 1, so it will become just minus x1, minus x2, minus x3. Now we bring in on other side, become plus, and that's what we have. Yeah, but I mean, hmm? instead of them, what's, what's the values would be? What's For what? The matrix with less column, right? Yeah, okay. 11, 11 columns now. Before we had 12 columns. See, we have 12 columns if you count these. Now we have 11 columns. But there should be 12. No, why should? In order to get the no, no, I mean, so you know. You not get the value for YN if you're not. YN? The last one, YN. Why? No, I mean. 
No, no. See, yeah, let's let's listen carefully. See that what we have is this is our system. Okay, in all these we are we know everything here. We know the uppercase x y. We know small. You know everything. The unknowns are these twelve unknowns. Okay, so I'm saying let's select a four four as one. So now we have eleven unknowns. Okay, so therefore, if this is one then the system is saying that the first equation is x1 a11 plus y1 a12 and plus z1 a13 and all this thing and this is now minus x1 is equal to 0 that's the first equation yes no, no, I, I think you are confused and just think about what, listen to what I'm saying. See, this is a pretty simple thing, right? This is a one, I'm multiplying this with that. Yes, let's look at this one here. Let's, let's look at this one, okay? This is easier. So this is my equation. Here I have a11, a12, a13, a14, first four. Then I don't have a21, a22, a23, a24. I don't have a31, we don't have those eight ones, yes? And then I have a, a41, a42, a43, a44. So this is the first equation. So in this one, I have the eight unknowns, but the whole system has the 12 unknowns, okay? Because the other one, y has the other four. So this is my equation. Now what I'm doing in this one, I'm assuming a44 is one. Yes, so which means that in this equation I can write down, I can bring in x on the right side because it's known. Okay, so this equation will become a11x, a12y, and all this is equal to x. Okay, so now in this one actually are seven unknowns instead of eight because I decided a44 is one. Okay, so therefore this equation I can write down like this as I have shown here that this is exactly same, this multiplied by this is equal to x1 is exactly same as I have this equation here when a44 is 1. Okay, so like that I can easily write down this way because I have already decided a44 is 1 so I can take the last column and bring it on the right side because no x1 is known x2 is known x3 is known yes why can you assume that the a44 is 1 yeah the reason is as I said because see this is the this is the homogeneous system which means on the right side is 0 is equal to 0 so let's say somebody told me the solution is p1 is a p1 is a vector with some values, okay? So now you tell me the solution of this system is p1 vector. Now I will tell you that 2 multiplied by p1 is also a solution because if I multiply 2 on this side, multiply 2 on this side, still the same. I will tell you 3 p1 is also a solution because of 0 on the other side. So there are many, many, many solutions. So there's no way I can have a unique solution, which means that I can select any element arbitrarily. I say A44 is 1. Now I have 11 unknowns. So that's the idea. This is a simple linear algebra thing. OK, so, so if, if you still don't understand, I can explain to you later, OK? So, so but this is pretty, pretty straightforward. So once we know that, so then we can find the camera parameters, the 11 unknowns, and we are in a way done with the calibration of a camera by finding the 3D points in the world, putting that uh, chess checkerboard pattern by which we know the 3D point, taking a picture, then we know x, y, z, and x, y, small x, small y, lots of these, and then we do the least square fit, you know, then we will find out these. Uh, Unknowns. Sorry, one more question. Yeah. Want to find the value? I mean, the last matrix want to find the value for Q, right? Yeah. Why you just like then take the value, the inverse of D, and multiply by R? 
Yeah, see, that's what I'm, I will just have explained to you, so you're not listening. See that this D is not a square matrix, so you cannot invert that. Because, see, so just, just listen carefully. This is what I've been saying. This is square, not a square matrix, because see, it has the 11 or 12 columns, and it has, you know, many, many rows. So it's not a square matrix. So, so we, that's what the whole least square fit idea is, that we have more constraints. Yeah, we'll have more constraints. It's called over-constraint system. See, if you have, say, two equations, two unknowns, it is called constraint system. You know, you can solve linear system. If you have two equations, like in Lucas Kanade, we have two unknowns, and we look at the three by three number, we have nine equations. So we have all constraint systems, we do least square fit. So we have rectangular matrix, we divide by transpose, and now this D transpose D will become a square matrix, okay? So that's the idea. Okay, so now, see, once we can find these, um, um, these camera parameters, the A's, then we can do lots of interesting things. One thing we can do is we can find out the location of a camera by looking at the picture, okay? So let's say we have a 3D point here, and this image is formed here. And as you know, the image is always formed from 3D points. We draw a line to the where the lens is. This is a lens. So that's our perspective projection, okay? So then there's another 3D point, and um, we draw a line from there to the lens, an image of this will be formed here. So now we want to find out from the picture and given the camera matrix, we want to find out the location where the camera, the picture was taken, the L. So what we can do is essentially, if we can find the intersection of these rays, that is the basic location of the camera, okay? So that's a process, you know, there was a paper, actually they did that. So we'll take a one 3D point, is X1, and we'll find out image coordinates in the homogeneous system, which is this one. And then the the third component in homogeneous is you know, not really useful. We will um, make it zero, and we will find out the corresponding 3D point of that um, image point for which we have made the third as zero and maybe that 3D point will be this one, X11. Because this is the image, this is the image of these points and they, they have to lie on the, on the ray. So therefore, if X1 was image here, then if we make the third element zero, then that the word point corresponding to that will lie somewhere here, so suppose it's here. Then we'll take another point, 3D point, which is X2, its image is here, Again, we play this trick and make the third element zero and find its corresponding 3D point, which is X21, and then we intersect these two and we find the location of a camera. It's very simple, okay? So um, that's what we have. Now, in the mathematically, what we have is this is our camera matrix, and we talked about how to find that. Once we have that, then we can relate the 3D coordinates with the 2D coordinates in the homogeneous system. And we, for simplification, we'll say U1 is equal to A matrix multiplied by X1, as I showed you in the, in the picture. And then this will have the homogeneous coordinates in the image, CH1, CH2, CH3, CH4, and we'll just make the CH3 zero. And so this will become another 3D point, which we'll call U1 prime and we will multiply with inverse of this M matrix, and which, will, which we'll call X11, okay? So now we have two 3D points. One is U1, which we selected, uh, I mean X1, which we selected, and we have another 3D point, which is X11, by reprojecting the image point back to the 3D by finding, by setting the third element as zero. So we get X11. Similarly, we take another 3D point, X2, we get this image points, Q2, and make the third element zero, and find the inverse of this, multiply with that, 
we get another 3D point x22 corresponding with x2, as I showed you the picture here. Here, so this x1 and this is x11, this is x2, x11. We can draw a line here. We can draw a line. They intersect, and that's the location of a camera. That's it. It's pretty simple. So now we can do another thing that we can find the orientation of a camera. This was the location where it's located. We can find out where, how it was oriented when we take a picture. So the, the idea is very simple. As you see here, say object is here, the lens is here, the picture of this object is formed here. Now let's say we move the object closer to the lens, say it becomes here, then again image is formed here. Now, the difference between these two is they since the object moves closer to the camera, the, uh, the image will be bigger, it will be in large scale. Let's say move further, then it will become even bigger. Okay? So we keep moving the object closer to the camera, closer to the camera. Now, in the extreme case, the, when the object is at the lens itself, okay, then where will be the image formed? at infinity because we we have object here we want to draw a line which goes through the lens and also hit the plane it's going to hit the, at the infinity because as you see it's moving 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 like that so that is the point we are going to use to find the orientation of camera which is pretty interesting so so we have this system we know the a so we have the x y z word coordinates and multiply a and x, y, z, we get the homogeneous coordinates in the image. And uh, now when will an image coordinates are defined like this? x is ch1 divided by ch4, y is ch2 uh, divided by ch4. That's the Cartesian coordinates. When will the x, y will become infinity using these two equations? ch4, if it is 0, then become infinity. So that's what we are going to do. So we'll say in this system, CH4 is given by this, which is the A41X, A42Y, A43Z plus A440. So that actually is the equation of plane, X, Y, Z. So this A41, A42, A43, that give you a surface normal of the plane where the camera was oriented. Very easy. But it's a good good reasoning. Okay? So let me give you an example. So actually somebody did that in San Francisco. So they did all this and find the camera matrix uh, which is shown here for the San Francisco picture which is shown here. This is a picture. And using this camera matrix then they found out that the camera was located at intersection of California and Mason Streets. How many of you have gone to San Francisco? So there's a Mason Street, there is, a, you know, California Street, so it's actually there. It was 430 feet above the sea level and it was oriented at the angle 8 degrees above the horizon and these were the, you know, focal lengths in X and Y. So it is locations here. This is a map, this is an image. This is another example. Uh, this is a camera matrix, and it's a picture for this one. They found out it was located 1,200 feet above the sea level, and this was the orientation of the camera, four degrees above the horizon, and this is a focal length. Okay? So this is nicely described in a very nice paper um, by Tom Strott, uh, which I'm putting reference here. So, um, so that is the first part. And um, do you have any questions on this part before I go to the next one? Yeah. Can you again how the Yeah. So orientation um, is um, this way that we are using the fact that how the image is formed. You know, so we have object which is shown here, and uh, its image is formed here. These rays has to go through the lens, okay? So now, um, say object was at this distance here, 
and this is its image. This is the length of the this. So when we move the object closer to the lens, now object becomes bigger. Okay? We move further, even it's become bigger. And it's obvious that's the way it happens when you take a picture. When you move closer, closer, you know, object becomes bigger, bigger. Yes? In the picture. So now what is the extreme case that let's say object is exactly at the lens. You know. So then the image will become an infinity because it's a straight line we are drawing. It's never going to hit the camera. Okay? Now then we are saying that well how do we find the image coordinates? This is what we have been talking about. X image coordinates given by the CH1 divided by CH4. Y coordinates given by CH2 divided by CH4. That's it. So then we say, well, when it's infinity, X will become infinity, Y will become infinity. And when it will become infinity? It will become only infinity when CH4 is zero. Yes? And let's say then, what is CH4 equal to? Which means we multiply this with the fourth row of this matrix. And that was the A41X plus A42Y plus A43Z plus A44. Okay? So now when you look at it, this is the equation of a plane. And this is the normal of the plane. A41, A42, A43, A44. So actually you don't have to do anything. You just look at the fourth row and that gives you the orientation, the normal to the plane where the camera is located, which is very interesting. Okay, any other question? Go ahead. You, you have a question? No. Who else? Who else have a question? Yes. Uh, for the uh, camera model, if I uh, like zoom in the camera, mm -hmm. what's the effect for the camera model? Which is the focal length. You know. Yeah, focal length will change. The um, <clears throat> see the camera has these uh, extensive parameters, which is the translation, rotation. These are called extensive parameters, and we have to talk more about that in another model. And intrinsic parameter, the most important parameter, is the focal length f. So that's what you know. We when we say that we calibrate a camera, we need to know two parameters, two set of parameters: extrinsic and intrinsic. Intrinsics are focal length, and other thing is that what is the scale that we convert the pixels to the inches or the feet? You know, because 3D is in inches and feet, but they map it to the pixels. So we we'll talk about that. You know, those factors, and and that's it. That's your full camera model. Yes. Orientation would be in degree measures. So this is the equation which will be giving the normal. The yeah. Thing. Yeah. So what, what reference we are going to take this as a normal in order to get the correct angle on this? Yeah, so you can see that given the um, you know surface normal which define the orientation of the um, a plane, then you can from that you can find out the angles with respect to x, y and z. Suppose you know if I have a 3D here, you know, x, y, z so I have a normal, you know, which is like this. So that's one way to represent the orientation. You know? Now, once you are going normal, then you can find the angles with respect to x, with respect to y, with respect to z. So it's you know simple math. Um, <clears throat> and there are ways that see if you go to my book, the fundamental computer vision, the one way to define the rotation matrices is called what is called Rodriguez formula. So there you don't have a matrix, you actually have a vector, you know. And uh, so you can, you know, go define in rotation on x axis, y axis like an Euler angle we did, or you can say that we are rotating around arbitrary axis. So these are just different ways to you know define it's the same thing. You know. If I if I know the plane its orientation then I can find out what is the angles which are which will align this with respect to the word coordinate system. But the word coordinate system also has an orientation. You know? It will it, it can be just like that or it can be like that. So there's I have another three D coordinate system then they are how they are related. 
Okay, any other question? Okay, so just to summarize um, what we just finished is camera parameters and um, we have extensive parameters. Um, these are the parameters which relates to location, orientation of camera and then um, that is the translation, 3D translation vector and then the um, 3D, 3 by 3 rotation matrix. Intrinsic parameters which are the um, necessary to link the pixel coordinate with the um, image point and um, the, um, they include the perspective projection, the focal length and also the transformation between camera frame coordinates and the pixel coordinates. So um, we will revisit this uh, camera model um, one more time and um, talk about um, very similar but a little uh, different model uh, in order to be able to drive these uh, exact parameters uh, in terms of rotation, translation, and focal length, and so on. Because we just what we discussed earlier, there uh, we were um, f doing the camera calibration, finding this A matrix, these um, uh, 12 or 11 unknowns, and then we are able to um, um, find these the mapping from 3D to the 2D but we didn't have directly the um, the rotation and translation parameters. All these were kind of collapsed in this A coefficient, the A matrix. So here specifically we are going to actually be able to come up with the um, uh, rotational matrix, translation, other parameters. So this is the um, simple model we start with. So we have the um, word coordinates uh, which are x, y, z in the homogeneous system. This is the rotation matrix and translation vector. So we take the word coordinate p uh, in the hom homogeneous and then multiply with rotation matrix and translation matrix and we get this pc. Um, then this matrix which is product of translation and rotation matrices we call them m matrix, m extrinsic and um, then we are going to use the, the re perspective projection again and here again we have the X5Z word point this is a lens uh, here which is shown here and the ray of light will hit the object go through that and the image is formed here now what we are saying here the image plane is actually in front of the lens uh, normally image plane is behind the lens just to make the simple equation so in this case also the distance from the lens to the image plane is f which is the focal length and distance from here to the point is in z direction z and this is y and this is the image of this in the image plane it's just from 2d to 1d and this is small y um, which is a projection of the uh, capital y <coughs> so in this model uh, actually again we can look at these um, um, equivalent triangles, the, the one big one and one small one here uh, where the origin is the lens, then we can um, drive this relationship the small y, the image coordinate of the point divided by the uppercase y, the word coordinate of the object is equal to focal length and divided by z. So y is equal to this and similarly we can come up with x is equal like that. So this perspective model, uh, we can actually write the perspective matrix like that. So we have a 3 by 3 matrix and we have x, y, z. If you multiply this with the first row, it will become fx plus uh, f uh, plus 0 multiplied by y, 0, this will be 0. So it will become fx. And then if you multiply with the second row, it will become 0 and f, y. And then the third row is 0, 0, and z. So since the homogeneous, so we have fx upon z and fy upon z for the uh, camera coordinates, the image coordinates here, uh, as we have been talking about the perspective matrix. So um, <clears throat> now we are going to relate these uh, image coordinates, which we'll call x, i, m, and y, i, m, camera coordinates, which is just x, y, and the image center in pixel is OX, OY and then we have 
the um, effective size of a pixel, which is the SX, S5, uh, in terms of millimeters or centimeters in horizontal and vertical directions. So using this, we can write down the X, Y, which are the camera coordinates. In terms of image coordinates, the image center O, X, O, Y, and these are scaling factors. Okay, and this we can rewrite like this. X, I, M from here will be equal to minus X upon S, X plus O, X origin, and similarly Y, M. So that um, gives you the transformation from the camera coordinates to actually image coordinates in terms of these uh, origin translation and these scaling factors. So now we have uh, this model, which is the word homogeneous, rotation, translation, then the perspective. Now we have enough image and then last transformation, the camera. So this is what we have. We already know this one, the extrinsic, and this is the perspective transformation, and this is the camera and the image coordinate system transformation. So we have these three matrices, and starting with the word homogeneous, give you the camera homogeneous like that. So we can multiply these two matrices, um, um, these two matrices, and then F will bring in here, and then this is rotation translation this way, and then we will call this, we have been calling this uh, extrinsic matrix, matrix MX, and this is the M int, intrinsic matrix. So you have two matrices um, which relates the word to the camera homogeneous. Um, and we can multiply these two matrices, get a one, one matrix called M. Okay, so um, now we um, can multiply these two matrices, M int and MX, and we'll get this huge matrix. Again, this is the <clears throat> three by four matrix. We have three rows and four columns. And um, as you see, if you multiply this column with the first row, comes minus F upon SX R11 plus zero and plus R3 OX. And that'll be the first term here and you multiply this you will get the second term and so on. You should be able to verify that. So um, that is what we caught for using the systematic model of the translation, rotation, and then perspective transform and relating the camera and the image coordinates. And in this, we have these parameters, the rotation matrix, the nine unknowns, and the translation vector and the focal length and all those things. So um, <clears throat> that's what we have from previous one. Now um, we can simplify this further because we have F and then we have a scaling factor SX. We'll just call this uh, FX and this will call the FY. And we have now, um, we don't have anything in denominator. We have these kind of metrics. So um, we now, remember that we did the camera calibration, estimated, if you know the 3D points, and we know the corresponding 2D points, then we just discussed that how we can estimate the camera calibration in terms of A matrix, where we have 11 unknowns, okay? And um, so from the camera matrix, now we want to determine the extrinsic and intrinsic parameter using this model we just discussed. The translation, rotation, and the FX, FY, and OX, OY. So we're gonna talk about that. So now, so in a way we have two uh, camera models. One is the, this model M, and um, which was the <coughs> model we used in previously, which we are calling A matrix, uh, which is multiply these matrices together, we get that. Now here, this model we just try, where we have a specific uh, meaning of each of the term. Uh, this contains the rotation terms, uh, the focal length terms, and the, the scaling terms, and all those things, and the translation here. So these, we want to relate these two matrices, okay? 
and we want to compare knowing the M matrix which we got from the calibration knowing the 3D points and corresponding 2D points from there we want to determine the, the parameters on the right side in terms of the extensive parameters and interest parameter which are the rotation matrix, translation, uh, FX and FY and OX and OY. So one thing is that we remember that when we estimated the camera matrix um, we um, had the homogeneous system so M was not the unique solution but it was up to a scale factor. So therefore we can have M hat and we can have some scale factor multiplied by M is still is a solution and that's the, always the case in the homogeneous system. So therefore when we compare these two matrices, this is the matrix finding 3D known points and their corresponding points, uh, this matrix <coughs> and this is the, what we just computed analytically. So we have this scaling factor gamma and um, we are going to uh, now look at that, how we can eliminate that or how we can find the values. And the fact we are going to use here is um, that um, we are going to um, use this as a rotation, um, row of a rotation matrix. And rotation matrix is the orthonormal, which means we can take a row or a column of rotation matrix, this is a third row of rotation matrix, find a dot product of that, then it has to be one. If we take the rotation matrix a row and find that part of it another row, then it has to be zero. That's the property of orthonormal matrices. So therefore, this is the dot product of third row, and we get a magnitude, and this is the third row, row corresponding to this M matrix. So these have to be equal according to this comparison in the gamma. Now, so since this is one, now we are getting only magnitude of gamma and uh, then what we can do that we can divide each element of M hat by the magnitude so that we can get rid of this uh, factor magnitude. We still have to deal with the sign. So the way we are going to do it is uh, <clears throat> first we will estimate the translation depth Z uh, by comparing term by term these two matrices because we assume we know that. We have known 3D points, we have known 2D points and we went through the least square fit uh, earlier part of the lecture, we know all these terms. From here, given these, we want to find out all these. So we will find out the TZ by <coughs> comparing this with this and then also these elements of rotation matrix third row by comparing these with that. Once we know that, then we are trying to find out the OX because in this row, uh, if the this element is known, so we are going to somehow going to cancel this and find out OX and that way we can also find out OY. So these are the two steps. Then once we know OX, OY, then we'll try to find out the R1, uh, 1, one and R2, 1 and R2, 2 and so on. Because in this one then, OX is known, R3 is known, F known, then we can find out those. And then finally we are going to compute a TX and TY. So that's the process we are going to follow. So let's look at this now, <coughs> step by step. And uh, so this is what we have. Now first thing we are going to do, since these two matrices are equal, which means we can take this TZ, which is a fourth component in the third row, and should be equal to the fourth component in third row in this side, uh, with the difference that we already have taken care of magnitude of that, but the sign we haven't taken care. So this can be positive or negative, so that's why we have this uh, sigma here. So now we can use a fact that if TZ is positive, which means the origin of the word reference is in front, uh, or TZ is negative, then in that case the origin of word reference is in the back. Using this we can determine the sign, you know, whichever way 
the convention we are using, so we will basically know the sign of that. So once we know the sign, then we can find just equating TZ with M3, 4, we can find TZ, which is translation in depth. And this way, we can find these R31, R32, R33, because again, this is equal to this multiplied by sigma, this is equal to this multiplied by sigma, and so on. So that way, now we are done with the last row of this matrix, uh, which is gives us the third row of a rotation matrix and the translation and depth. So we are making progress. So now um, we have the same these two matrices on left and right side. We know the left side. We want to find out elements on right side. Um, so what we are going to do, we are going to look at these three rows. We'll call this Q1, uh, the first three elements, uh, Q2 and Q3, which is going here. And we are going to manipulate those uh, to find the rest of the elements. Okay. So let's say if we take the Q1 uh, with Q3, you know, these two, and find a dot product, so they'll become M11, M21, uh, M31, I mean Q1, Q3, I'm sorry. Q1, Q3, M11 multiply by M31, and M12 multiply by M32, and M13 multiply by M33, we get like this. Um, and um, on the right side, we have to do the same thing. So multiply these elements with these, and remember that we know these, so that's why we are using this. So this is what we are going to do, because this is the first element, um, which is minus fx, r11, r31, and ox. And um, this is the second element, third element. And this we want to multiply with r31, r32, like that. So dot product, component by component, this will multiply with r31. And uh, <coughs> um, we are going to actually do it a little differently. So we're going to break this term, this one, this one, this one, and this, then plus, then the rest terms. So we have here the R31 OX and second term here R32 OX and so on from here, and the first terms here, and both of them, this multiply by R31, R32, and so on, and this also multiply by that. Then we do the actual dot product. <coughs> And uh, now one thing is that you have to see that uh, <clears throat> this is the third row of rotation matrix and um, this contains the first row of rotation matrix R11, R12, R13 because this fx is common. So we multiply third row with the first row because of orthonormal rotation matrix this will become zero. Okay. And uh, second term, since it's multiply with itself, third row with this th itself, so that will become uh, uh, one. And we will have um, this multiplication is shown here. So R31 square, OX, and R32 square, and so on. And we take, take OX common, and this is one, so therefore we have OX now, which is equal to dot product of Q1 and Q3. So now we know the OX. So similarly, if we do the Q1 and Q2, which is this one and this one, then we can find OY because this has contained OY instead of OX. So that's good. So then we know now the third row. We know the OX and OY in this. and um, now we want to find out fx and fy because in this one you know that's what uh, is remaining so for that we are going to do q1 with q1 dot product of these two rows um, and um, this multiply with this plus this multiply with this oh i'm sorry this multiply with itself multiply with itself this multiply with itself and like that so we do the same thing here and this is the first row from this, and this is the first row from that. So, um, <clears throat> doing that, we will um, get here, uh, as you see, that we have the 
minus fx r1 whole square then this one whole square and this one whole square then we can um, expand this um, <coughs> when we are going to um, <coughs> expand this um, this thing so this will become fx square r1 square and r31 square and x square and we will have minus 2fx ox r11 r31 and we'll square this one also like that this one also like that now those minus 2fx r11 r31 and here minus 2fx r12 r32 and here minus 2fx r13 r33 so that will essentially will be the product of the row 1 and row 3 because of orthogonal matrices that will become 0 so that's why we have not included those terms here so then um, we can simplify this also further because in um, here we can take fx square common so it'll be r1 square r12 square and r13 square that's one so that we get fx square from here we can take ox square common then it will become r31 square r32 square r32 square and that will become one so that's get you ox square so therefore Q1 dot product of Q1 is f x squared plus o x squared, and we already know the o x, so therefore we can find f x. Once we know the f x, we can actually find um, similarly the f y by doing the Q2 with Q2, which is this one. So now we know the o x, we know the f x, we know this thing. And we know the third row, so we are you know, very close to knowing everything. Um, so the last thing we are going to do, we want to determine the um, first row of rotation matrix, R11, R12, R3, R13, and similarly the second row. So um, if we look at um, the, um, <coughs> the um, this, um, equation here we have ox31 plus fx r11 so what we are doing we are taking the this element and um, subtracting from the uh, <coughs> this one so we um, have the uh, ox 3, 1, and then we have here the if you look at this one it become easier because we multiply OX with M31 minus M11 on this side so we are going to do the same thing OX multiply by 3, 1 and minus minus will become plus FX R11 and minus R31 OX so multiply the OX and subtract from here on this side and the left right side we have from here so in this one then we know um, quite a few things we only don't know r11 okay because um, we know the ox and of course all the m elements we know so we will um, bring in r11 left side and rest of the elements on the right side and this is again a sign which which we can determine plus or minus and so this way knowing this knowing this and all this we can find r11 and uh, that way we can find r12 and r13 just looking at the other element this we will look at the first one look at the second one to find second element and third one and uh, we can also do with the for the second row for the R2 so here we are going to do M3 uh, with M2 as it's shown here different element um, <coughs> and uh, in this one we have OY instead of OX 
So we will multiply, say, OY with M3, um, <coughs> uh, any of the element, and then subtract with M2. So here, as you see, if you multiply with OY, they will become OY R31 minus this, they will become plus this and uh, minus that. And we have similar relations with here, we can find out the uh, R21, R22, and so on. And the finally, we have to find the Tx and uh, the Ty um, from this because <coughs> as we have done in this comparison to find the, the R11, R12, and so on, we can do the same thing if you take M34 and multiply with Ox minus M2, M14, this will become uh, our case here. So we have O, X, and multiply the fourth element here, um, and then subtract the from here. So that will give you the um, Tx, and similarly we can find out the Ty by multiplying the Oy with M34 and then subtracting from M24 which is this one um, because we already know the Tc. Um, so that will give you the Ty. So with that we actually determine all these unknowns. So the reading material is that um, the chapter one from my book uh, talks about um, detail about this geometric uh, model and also um, this is a good reference for the camera model which I have covered, I have followed closely and uh, then um, the paper which I mentioned, I give you an example from San Francisco um, area uh, which is available in this um, paper. Okay, that's it.